We'll see with Dave Smith. This we're going to get back to, in fact, to uh, a story we covered it in the news for you. The Cuban president, Raul Castro, is in uh, France for uh, rather an historic state visit, isn't it, Will? Yeah, that's right. It really is. Uh, this is his, uh, his visit underscores this sort of new era of diplomatic ties with uh, the nation. And this rapprochement really follows Washington's lead with Cuba. But in May, French President Francois Hollande was the first European leader to visit Cuba in more than 50 years. Catherine Viet has a look at what's in store. Become Cuba's first European economic partner. That's the goal of French President Francois Hollande. And negotiations are pretty far along. The two leaders have already approved an agreement to be signed, which includes partial debt forgiveness and reinvestment in Cuba. I think that it's an opportunity to expand the vision that President Hollande had when he was in Cuba, to learn more about the Cuban reality and therefore to strengthen relations between the two countries. Paris also hopes to shore up the presence of French companies in Cuba. With about 180 million euros in annual trade, France is in the top 10 of the island's partners. For its part, Cuba has announced a series of infrastructure projects accounting for more than $15 billion in key sectors such as construction, energy, agriculture, and especially tourism. France sees stronger ties with Cuba as an opportunity to expand its influence in Latin America. I think Cuba can be for France in Latin America something similar to what France can be for Cuba in the European Union. Cuba also needs to seek new sources of income as its main ally and financial backer, Venezuela, slips deeper into crisis. The country's public debt is about 32 percent of GDP, of which 80 percent is late interest payments. The thawing of diplomatic relations between Havana and Washington last year has been a boon for the country. Since then, it's welcomed a record number of tourists, numbers only set to grow. Catherine Viet there. Will, how are things um, looking on the markets as we stand then? Well, European markets opening up at the top of the hour. Oil and gas up 1% on the wider sector. That's also helping airline companies like Ryanair, which has reported soaring profits earlier today. The FTSE opening up about up half a percent. The CAC 40, the only one down in the red. Uh, mixed bag in Asia earlier. Financials on the Nikkei were mainly down, though Toyota, Nissan and Canon all up. That's also thanks to the yen against the dollar. Hong Seng down about seven tenths of a percent. Shanghai Composite down about two percent. Stuart, Shanghai, we're seeing a lot of volatile trading there in China. So as well says, continued volatility then on that Chinese stock market. But Renault, um, they're hoping that the country's auto market proves uh, a little bit, anyway, um, more reliable, aren't they? Yeah, that's what they'd like to see. Today was a ribbon cutting of a massive new facility. It was two years ago that Renault, along with its Chinese partner, Dongfeng, began building a new factory. Renault has said China is not its principal market, but that it is unquestionably a strategic one. Earlier, I asked our correspondent, Ben Long, about the French carmaker's ambitions. Between 2017 and 2022, it's not a new partnership. It's been in fruition for three years, but today is the opening of their $1 billion factory in Wuhan, in the center of China. And the first car expects to be rolling off the production line next month for about 20,000 euros. Uh, that's going to be one of those electric SUV vehicles that uh, uh, Carlos Ghosn is really banking on. Renault has been left behind somewhat by, other, uh, uh, by its rivals. But it still sees China as very important in its strategy because the car market here is still growing. And it is, cons it is very confident that e-vehicles e and SUVs are going to revive its fortunes. That's Ben Lung there in Beijing. Now, our final story with Will. Of course, you are familiar with video on demand, but dozens of Japanese companies are offering rather a different kind of service. This is... Um, <laughs> Buddhist monks on demand. Yeah, uh, stay with me. Go online, <laughs> order a monk, and they can perform funerals or other rituals. Transportation and a donation is included in the price of about 300 euros. Now, this has emerged as Japan's 75,000 temples are fading. The rent a monk service has come under fire, though, from Buddhist associations who say it commodifies religion. However, there have been already 400 monks that have registered for this service. Let's listen to one. People don't observe religious events anymore. Temples and monks need to accept that things are changing. This should be a chance for people to better understand Buddhism. Brenta Monk, very nice, Will. Thank you very much, Will. With